So we're going to start with Iris Gray, and I'm going to let Iris say, you know, wh you know where she's been and who she is and, and where she's going. Hi, everybody. Uh, I was diagnosed when I was in my mid-30s. I first found out that I might be on the autism spectrum a little over 20 years ago when my ex-girlfriend emailed me out of the blue telling me about something called Asperger's syndrome. And I looked up the links that she sent me and I thought, holy cow, this sounds like me. And so I thought when I found out that all I had to do was go out and talk to my doctor and say, hey, I want to get an evaluation. And my doctor immediately said, you're too smart. You're too intelligent. You can't have a disability because you're too intelligent. Uh, and I asked for a referral, but it turned out the only person in Victoria who did referrals on the public system was on a long-term leave of absence. Uh, and so I went to multiple, I went on antidepressants, I went to multiple mental health programs, I spoke to a psychologist who was apparently the person in Victoria who diagnosed autistic children, <coughs> excuse me, and he said, first of all, you're a girl, girls aren't autistic which makes me wonder if there are some 20-something-year-old women running around Victoria who never got a diagnosis. Second of all, you don't fit the DSM criteria. He literally read out the DSM criteria for autism and said, nope, you don't fit this criteria. And you also said you have a girlfriend, so therefore you're, you're, you're bisexual. So, you know, autistic people aren't sexual, so, you know, they're not gay or lesbian. <laughs> Uh, oh, and I have friends too, so apparently uh, autistic people don't have friends. I was all, and I said, so why, why am I having these struggles then? Why am I having all these problems with social skills? Well, that's because your parents didn't teach you social skills when you were a kid. So, <clears throat> unfortunately, I have another friend whose mother was told that she was a bad mom when the mom was seeking an evaluation for her daughter. Uh, so I do wonder if that means that people are still reading Bettelheim. Um, anyway, it took me about seven years before I was finally able to get a diagnosis of uh, what was then called Asperger syndrome and also nonverbal learning disability, which covers the whole bad at math part because I am bad at math too. And uh, so I, I had a lot of struggles growing up. I very seldom had friends, and when I did have friends, uh, it was kind of like, okay, welcome to my house. These are my toys. You play with these toys over here and I'll play with these toys over there. <laughs> or hey, let's read comics. You read these comics and I'm gonna go over here and read these comics. And sometimes apparently these kids would complain to my mom, uh, Iris isn't playing with me. And I thought I was, cause you know, we're in the same room and we're playing, so doesn't that mean that I'm playing with you? But apparently it doesn't. Anyway, as an adult, I finally got a diagnosis and I immediately started contacting autism organizations saying, hey, I got a diagnosis, I'm autistic, now what? And they said, sorry, what? You're an adult, you're 35, no services for you, bye. Okay, so fortunately I discovered what was called the, uh, at the time it was called the Asperger Syndrome Meetup Group, which was run by a fellow named Chris and got to meet other autistic people for the first time in my life, and that was a really amazing experience because I'm not the only one. And I later took over that group, I now run this group, and that is a very common experience when new people come to this group and they say, I'm not the only one. I've had people, uh, when we meet in a restaurant, I have people immediately order alcohol, uh, because that is how so many of us get through social situations, booze. But fortunately, what, I, what the people have discovered is they say, I didn't touch my drink the entire night. I was so comfortable being with you, I did not touch my drink the entire night. Uh, after I've been running this group for a few years, I noticed that there were very few women in this group. Sometimes a woman would come and discover all these men who were being very loud and very boisterous, and unfortunately sometimes looking for a girlfriend, and that, really discourage women from coming to my group. And because of this, I started a separate group for just for women. We currently have about four or five women in the, who regularly come and occasionally other people come. Sometimes they come saying, I wanna know about my kid, I wanna know about my daughter. Sometimes they come saying, I wanna know about myself. And we just meet, we go, we, we meet in a gluten-free cafe, we have, we have coffee, we have snacks, and we just, 
we don't necessarily talk about autism so much as we talk about ourselves. Like, oh my God, I'm having this problem at work. Oh my God, I'm having trouble with my boyfriend. Oh my God, I'm having this trouble at school. And it's, it, you probably wouldn't know just to say, well, what, how is this specific to autism? But when you talk to an autistic person, that is a non-autistic person, about your struggles, they'll probably say, well, doesn't everybody do that? Or, uh, well, you know, that's not a big deal. But to someone like me or my friends, it might be a big deal because we, we, we're we different. And if I'm, having social, if I'm having social skills problems at work, it's easier for me to talk to an outsider about it than someone that I sit next to at a desk for nine hours a day. Um, and I do currently have a job. I, mean, I do actually work nine hours a day. Uh, unfortunately, my job is seasonal, so... Sometimes I seek out freelance work, but unfortunately with the whole uh, uh, social anxiety, autism, and intro being an introvert, that does present more challenges than it might for a more extroverted, holistic uh, entrepreneur in going out and finding freelance work. I'm an editor and a transcriber. And what I like about my job is that I get to talk to people by uh, email all day and I don't have to talk to another human being. I get to sit at a computer all day and stare at the screen. Uh, which, and I've, I've heard that jobs like that are very, very popular among other autistic people where you get to look at a computer all day and not talk to other human beings. <coughs> and... So unfortunately, it is very hard for someone like me to find freelance work because I don't do the whole networking thing very easily. I asked, I asked uh, my partner, how do I network? He said, you talk to people. No, don't want to do that. Uh -uh. <laughs> so I haven't seen my, my signs yet, but, I'm sh but in an effort to give us more time for questions, uh, I'll just say, uh, I'm fi I, if you... If you want to talk to me, good icebreaker subject is cats. You want to know about cats, talk to me. <laughs> oh. And I will tell you my t-shirt says, I don't have autism, I am autistic. Thank you. Thank you, Iris. Uh, I think you made a lot of really great points. Some of the things that I heard too is talking about these struggles across time, right, the record, and then across all the different areas of life that you talked about, whether it's social and feeling comfortable or at, at, the, at work and, and how important it is in all those places.